Yo, welcome to the video. So today's gonna to be a quick one. We're gonna run through five super useful Figma plugins that are gonna be really um, helpful in speeding up your workflow. So without further ado, um, the first plugin that I'd like to recommend is this one here, and it's called Unsplash. So it's Unsplash is a service that provides um, royalty-free images, and the plugin just pulls images uh, from their database and populates objects on your Figma project with images. So I can probably show much better than I can explain. So I've got this sort of mocked up section of a hypothetical website and I've got this sort of image mosaic. And our theme of our website is business. So I could either search for like business woman or some other related uh, search term, or I could go to presets click on business and it's going to automatically populate all of these three uh, rectangles with images so it's super good they have a really robust comprehensive library so I highly recommend that plugin um, second plugin is one called Iconify you can see it because it's got this smiley face icon it's hard to miss so what does Iconify do so Let's take another hypothetical scenario. We've got this mobile app mock-up um, and we want to add some icons for the footer menu. So we'll just run Iconify. Um, you can see all these collections, a lot of the most popular icon libraries are already loaded there, like Carbon Design, Icon Noir, I really like. So let's go for Icon Watch because it's awesome. Um, you can just literally pull, pull icons straight onto your artboard so we're gonna I don't know I'm gonna choose a random random selection just to show how quick it is um, I don't know what else it's, it's supposed to be a recipe app so it's kind of difficult yeah Apple perfect uh, what else could it be upload so we take our four icons and we just plonk them in and they're vectors and you can set the size within the plugin uh, here so you can customize that you can even flip them um, and override the, and set the color like if you have particular hex codes that you want to use um, so let's just show you how quick this is what was the primary color I can't remember let's make it a blue so yeah, the design's already coming to life thanks to Iconify, love it. Um, the third one is called Vector Logos. So I just wanna show you what it looks like within the Figma community panel. Um, it's this one. So I, I've got it installed, so I'm not gonna reinstall it. But this one actually just has a huge range of uh, logos from different popular brands and companies and even quite niche brands that you wouldn't necessarily expect. You can just search them um, and just drag the high quality vectors onto your artboard, I think. There we go. Only annoying thing is that it closes after you run one and if you need to do a few. It's really useful for me when you've got these like sections where you're um, showing, that was, that is a horrible, <laughs> that's a horrible logo. For these sections where you're showing companies that you've worked with or collaborated with, I was just doing a redesign for my company um, and I used, use this plugin quite a lot I don't know what's up with the placement sometimes it's a bit funny most of these plugins are like just just done by one or two people in their spare time so don't expect a bug free experience but irrespective of that they're really useful um, so I'm just showing you how it might work in a real life project with this fake fake um, design section gonna resize this usually when I'm working with logos like this I, I use a grid and then I create the containers then I sort of balance the logos within the containers because it's quite hard to get them visually balanced because they're all designed really differently I'm thinking of what can be the last logo let's go for Airbnb and you can see like most logos you have multiple variants so you can select the one that's best suited to your design i'll probably shrink this do, do. Probably. yeah 
So already you've got like some nice little social proof section for your website. Um, next one, and I think this is almost the final one. This is Tailwinds. Uh, it's called Tailwinds Color Palettes. It's this one here with the multicolored gradient logo. And this is awesome. All it's doing is just importing the latest Tailwinds palette, which is a CSS framework into your uh, Figma file as, uh, as color styles. And it's just a really beautiful color palette. You can see I've already got it installed, but if you were to do it from scratch, you just run the plugin and then you select whatever version of the color palette you like. I sort of, I'd encourage you to just experiment and see which one you like. I actually like the older ones, but I installed 2.24 today. Um, so how would you use it? Maybe you want to add a little bit of color uh, to a design. You can just use there. Use it like this. Pick some colors that you like. Um, and because they're all weighted, you can sort of balance them really easily. I think I made a mistake so it's about 50. Let's go for 100. Now. And then finally, I don't know, what, what can we do for the last one? Let's go for, no. Mm, violet, violet's nice. But as you can see, they're pretty well balanced. They go together. This isn't the nicest design. It's a bit rushed, but you can see that really going to speed up your workflow if you have a nice balanced color palette already imported as styles in your file usually importing um, color palettes as styles can be a bit cumbersome so it's great even if you just use it as a boilerplate and then you can modify the modify the colors it's really nice um, the final plugin is going to be something auto flow which is a bit different it's this one um, I love it so what this one is for is if you're doing screen flows and you're mapping um, interactions between screens, you just open it. You can set the stroke size. Um, you can set the stroke color. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother changing the color, but once it's open, you can just click either on an entire artboard. You can either do it like artboard to artboard just by holding shift, or you can do it from a particular element like a button. Um, to an artboard or to another element and it's just super useful helps you really communicate um, what the interaction should be in your designs especially when you've got more complex user flows with multiple journeys it's really really useful and we use it a lot at my job so there it is five figma plugins 